So what is the best social media graphics tool for small businesses? There are a lot of them. In this video, I'm gonna break down three of the most popular ones quickly for you so you can make the best decision for you and your business. All right, let's get into it. Hello, busy people. Welcome to 5-Minute Social Media, where I help time-strapped business owners get more results, powerful results from their social media without the need for a huge team, a huge budget, or having to post every single day in most cases. That sounds like something you'd like. Take a second, hit subscribe, click that bell. That way you'll be notified each week when we release another helpful video. My name is Jerry Potter. Yes, it rhymes with the boy wizard. And in this video, I'm breaking down the best social media graphics tool for small businesses. Now, what is important? Well, I assume what's important to you is the same that's important to me. What's important to me in a social media graphics tool is that it's simple, that it's affordable, and most importantly, that it's quick. I need to get in, I need to do my thing, and then I need to get back to running my business. So today I'm gonna to quickly show you three of the most popular social media graphics tools on the market so you can make the best decision for you and your business. And by the way, I've also linked to all three of them. My links are in the description of this video, and in some cases they not only include free trials, but special discounts just for people like you and me here in the 5-Minute Social Media community. So you don't forget to click those down below to get access to that. So the three programs we're going to compare today are Canva, Adobe Spark, and one that a lot of people in my FMSM Pro group coaching program have been mentioning lately, Snappa. All three of them are great because they already have pre-sized templates for the major social media images that you'd need. So scrolling down here on Canva, you can see Instagram post, Instagram story, which is more vertical, Facebook post, as well as cover photos. And if you don't see what you're looking for there, for example, let's say you were looking for something for Twitter, you can come up here and just type in Twitter and you can see all of the different options that Canva's got. Adobe Spark's got them laid out here by platforms. You can see Facebook and Twitter, Instagram. One thing I didn't like about Adobe Spark is if I type in Facebook cover photo, for example, it makes me start with a template and it also doesn't show me the actual sizes. And as you can see, these are different sizes. I like to design from scratch a lot. So when I click into the template for Canva, it just comes up blank and then it has all the templates over here. I would imagine that Adobe Spark was just trying to take out a step and there's nothing wrong with that. Just a personal preference for me. Snappa, of course, also has all of these major ones and you can go ahead and choose the one you're looking for, click in, and then they have the templates as well as the option to create from scratch right there. And no matter what you're making, all three of these options have lots and lots of templates that you can choose from. One of the great things that all three of these programs have is the ability to take an image that you've already created or a template and resize it. And this isn't a purely fair comparison because I'm using a Canva template on Canva and an Adobe Spark template on Adobe. So things might work a little differently, but we'll start here in Canva. You'd go up to the top, you'd hit resize. And for consistency, let's just do the Facebook cover photo into an Instagram post on all three. Okay, so you can see it rearranged it here. You can kind of see what would the original cover photo look like there. So it moved the graphics, put that in the middle. Not bad. Same thing in Adobe Spark. I come over here to resize. I'll choose Instagram, the square here. That actually worked pretty well. And this is in Snappa. I go to hit resize, Instagram post. And that one worked out well too. Another thing to consider is the photo library that's available to use. And in Canva, they have a massive selection and they now offer all the photos that they have in there for free if you're a Canva Pro user. Another thing that I like, they've got some categories already set up here at the top. And then they've actually got search filters, which is nice. So if you're using the free version, you can just click that so you only see free photos, but also by color. So if you're looking for a certain color, you can choose here, including any color that you put the hex code in for. And then you can also search by vertical versus horizontal. That's something else they've added that I really, really like. In Adobe Spark, we click the plus sign to add photos. And then they've got several different libraries here that you can choose from. The free photos search just searches Creative Commons licensed photos. Adobe Stock is where you can buy photos to use. Libraries is where if you've uploaded your own photos, for example, you might upload all of your branding photos or logos or something, you can have them there. And then Lightroom means you can connect to Adobe Lightroom if you also use that product. Here in Snappa, you'd click on graphics and then photos. But just like Adobe Spark, it doesn't have the ability to search by orientation or colors the way that Canva does. 
if you keep a lot of stuff in the cloud, either for backup or for collaboration with other people, Canva integrates with Google Drive and Dropbox, among other things. Adobe Spark integrates here with Dropbox, Google Photos, and Google Drive. And as of this recording, Snappa does not have anything. You have to upload images directly. A couple more differences to be aware of. In Canva, everything will automatically save. And if for some reason it hasn't saved because your internet connection is off for a second or too slow, and you accidentally go to close the browser, it'll warn you. Adobe Spark also auto saves, but for some reason as of this recording, Snappa has built it to where you have to save your file by clicking save. So if I change this to San Diego for whatever reason, and then I refresh the browser, there's no warning and it reverts back. So if you're using this, just make sure that you hit save. I imagine that's something that they'll change or I'll just go ahead and say it, fix um, in the future. And even by the time you're watching this, they may have already changed that. Of course, all three programs do allow you to download your designs when they're ready. So you would come up here in Canva and you would click download. And Canva has a lot of different file types. They're even experimenting with GIFs and videos, which actually I've used and they work relatively well. You also, one thing I also like about Canva is they have, you can see here, standard smaller file size PDF as well as print quality PDF. But even inside of these, so if I choose JPEG, I can go through and right now it's going to download it at the standard Instagram size 1080 by 1080. But let's say it's a little grainy, so I want a higher resolution. I can automatically switch it to one and a half times as big, two times as big. Or if I don't need it full size because it's for a profile picture or something, I can also go down to half size. And there's also a quality. And you might think, well, I always want 100%. But if you are optimizing this, for example, to put on your website, that's where you might not want it full quality. Because the bigger an image is on the website, the slower your website actually loads. On Adobe Spark, you can see there are fewer options here as of now. And in Snappa, we click download. You've got a web optimized JPEG, which is great for website design, high res PNG file. And then also you can see that you can do a 2X size. So they've got a couple of options there. Other things you can do with your social media graphics when they're done. If I click this arrow next to download in Canva, you can see you can actually share it right to a Facebook page or a Twitter account. Pinterest, LinkedIn profile, LinkedIn page. So if I click on one of these, once your page or pages are connected, it'll show up here. And I can actually publish directly from Canva, including the ability to publish later. They'll let you schedule it from Canva, which is really, really cool. And from Snappa, I can hit share. Once you're connected, I select where I want to post it. And it will actually let me share directly from Snappa, which is really slick. It does not let you schedule the way that Canva did. But one thing Snappa has that the other two don't is it integrates with Buffer. So if you use Buffer for your social media scheduling, that might be reason alone to go with Snappa. If you like to do things on a mobile device, you should know that Canva has apps for iPhone, iPad, Android mobile phones, and Android tablets. And they've actually, for some platforms, have a separate app just for Instagram stories and vertical video. Meanwhile, Adobe Spark has Adobe Spark Post, which is the main one you'd be using for social media graphics. And they have one for iOS, iPhones, and Android. And then they also have two other apps, Adobe Spark Page, which is for websites or web stories, as they say. And then also Video Stories is Adobe Spark Video. And those last two are only available, at least as of now, for iPhones and iPads. And as of this recording, Snappa does not have a mobile app yet. But of course, if you work primarily at a computer, that doesn't really matter. Now, if you're doing social media graphics regularly for your business, I think it's well worth the paid version for any of these. So you can see Canva has a free plan. This $10 a month is if you pay for a full year up front. I always look at the regular monthly prices. So it's $12.95 here in the US. Adobe Spark is $10 a month, so a little bit less. And then Snappa is $15 a month. The prices are so close to each other, like within a couple of bucks, that I think getting the right tool is well worth it, even if it's a couple of bucks more than one of the other options. Couple other things to be aware of before you decide. If you print things regularly, Canva has printing built directly in, as you can see, t-shirts, business cards, posters. And from what I understand, the I've never used it, but the quality from everyone I've talked to is fantastic. Adobe Spark has a photo replace feature a lot of people like. So if I click on this photo, and over here I can click replace, automatically it knew that was a photo of a book, so it brought up similar photos, and I can just click on one of these other ones, and it'll pop it into that same space without messing up your design. 
And one other thing to know about Adobe Spark is if you already use Adobe Creative Cloud, some of their other programs like Photoshop or Premiere Pro, you may already have access to Adobe Spark. So factor that in as you're making your decision. So which one's likely to become your favorite? Let me know in the comments, and I've also got my special direct links to all three programs in the description of this video, not only to make sure that you get their free trials, but in some cases, discounts that are only available to you and I, members of the 5-Minute Social Media community. So grab those links down below. All right? Thank you so much for watching and supporting me at 5-Minute Social Media. You're not only supporting me, but also my two tiny superheroes at home.